guys, Alec Pierce at the ranch, and uh, I have something kind of fun today to uh, do with you. Uh, and and you saw the title already of this uh, video. It is how to make your own fire starter. Now we we live in the country, and uh, we, we we have fires pretty frequently. Well, heck, we heat the house with a fire. But even outside, so you know, when we clean up brush or trees or leftover because we heat with wood, if we have any leftover wood, we burn it. We have a fire pit and we get a big pile of stuff. We bring some neighbors in and the kids in and hot dogs and marshmallows. We have a big bonfire. And uh, some of you uh, older people may remember when bonfires were pretty popular. They're not so much anymore, but we still have them here pretty regularly. Plus other times we want to start a fire. We occasionally go out into the bush. It's beautiful up here. And, and we have bush just 100 yards away from the house. Lots of bush, uh, hundreds of acres of it. And we sometimes go out with the kids. Sometimes they go out in the evening, at night, after dark, with the kids on a, on a nice night, even if it's cold, it doesn't matter. And we bundle them up, and out we go, and we start a nice fire out in the bush. It's, ah, it's so much fun. And uh, other reasons why we start fires as well. So there's a lot of reasons why you might want to start a fire. Now, one of the problems of starting a fire is starting the fire. Exactly right. And I have seen some uh, some pretty crazy attempts. Now, I personally, when we have a, when we're burning some garbage, not garbage, but some, you know, consumable stuff, some stuff that'll burn, we need to get rid of it rather than take it to the dump, to the landfill, we'll burn it. Okay? And so we have maybe some cedar rails and, and, and some cardboard, and some brush, and stuff like that pile up. And we want to get it going. And sometimes it's hard to do because it's the wintertime, it's been snowed on and it's frozen and it's been rain and it's, it's soaking wet. Maybe there's some cardboard in there, the cardboard, cardboard gets soaking wet. It's really hard sometimes to get that fire started. So, uh, and, and we have, I have a special mixture that I make up, gasoline and diesel fuel and old motor oil. And you put that on there and the gasoline makes it light, the diesel fuel burns slow, diesel fuel is just kerosene, same thing, and the motor oil keeps it a nice smooth hot fire and in no time at all, even if it's, if it's cold, wet, and frozen, it'll thaw out, it'll dry, it'll burn so we can get a fire going. But that's a, that's a lot of work and, and you certainly don't want to be carrying that stuff around, it's smelly and a little bit dangerous too. So suppose you're out in the bush and you want to start a fire. Now, anybody with any experience camping or being out in the bush at all, they probably can get a fire started. You know, it's not really a, a, a tough skill to learn. If you know what to use and get it going, and particularly if you go prepared, you know, you have a lighter or you get it going and you have a little bit of paper to use as tinder and, and, and maybe a little bit of kindling and get it going. You, know, you, can, you can start a fire. But there's an easy way. Yeah, it's called a fire starter. This is not something special. It doesn't require any particular prescription from the doctor or special permission from, from your local congressman or member of parliament. You know, you don't have to do it. It's just a very, very simple little thing. There's no chemicals involved. It's not dangerous. It's safe. It's fun. And, 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 uh, and for me, it's a lot of fun because, you see, I'm a grandfather. You know, I have four kids and six grandkids. And the kids, you know, they think I'm a pretty good dad. You know, they, they love me. They think I'm a pretty good dad. But the grandkids, they think I'm fantastic. <laughs> I'm incredible. I can do anything. If Grandpa can't do it, nobody can. <laughs> I love it. This is, you know, that adulation is really nice. They'll get over that. Uh, but then uh, by then, I'll have great grandkids. <laughs> anyway, the, so, so one of the things that they always marvel at is Grandpa, you know, my Grandpa can go out into the woods in the wintertime and there's deep snow and he'll tramp the snow down and he'll sit down there and start a fire right there in the snow. That's unbelievable how he makes the snow rain. It's just the way they talk, you know, because it's true. When I go out, I go out with the kids sometimes in the evening. Literally, we take the snowmobile or the ATVs out, and we find a spot that's suitable, and we'll actually tramp the snow down, and I'll start a fire right there. And they think, <laughs> they think I'm incredible, but I'm old. I'm an old man. I cheat. <laughs> yeah, sure. I just don't waste. It's not an easy job. And, you know, the kids aren't going to sit around forever while you try to get a fire with a stick and all that foolishness going. <laughs> they want a fire. One of these fire starters will solve the problem. It'll start a fire anywhere, anytime, rain, snow, doesn't matter. They're cheap. I don't know how much they cost. I would say probably two cents each. You can actually buy them. You can actually buy them, but they're not two cents each. So I'm going to show you how to make one of these fire starters. And then maybe I'll even make a video, Kevin. It might be kind of fun. We can go out. It's nice. We'll maybe we'll go out and we'll show you how they actually work. We'll show you the kind of fun we have out in the bush. But let's make a fire starter first. So what do you need? What do you need to make a fire starter? Well, here's what you need. It's a big list. So get ready, okay? You need some string. White cotton string is probably the best, but almost any string will do. Better if it's cotton, it burns a bit better. You need some string, right? Now you need some muffin tins. Muffin tins? I think they're muffin. 
Are these muffin tins? These little paper ones, the little paper ones. Not tins, I guess they're not muffin tins. Muffin cups, whatever, whatever these, I don't even know what they're called. Or whatever they're called, that's what you need. Paper baking cups. Okay, whatever. You get about, well, you go to the dollar store. You can get about 60 <laughs> for a dollar. Keep track of the math here, Kevin. You need these, okay? You need one of those. And you need some wax, paraffin. It's called paraffin wax. Paraffin used to be very, very common. A lot of things you, they use paraffin for. Not so much anymore, but the only uh, thing they use paraffin for anymore is for canning. Yeah, some people actually still can vegetables and fruits, and some still do the old-fashioned way with paraffin. They use paraffin. It's wax. What it is, white wax. They use paraffin to, uh, to seal the top of the jar. So you need some paraffin, okay? And a, a, a box like this of paraffin is a few dollars, and you got enough in here to make about 20 fire starters. So if you're doing the math here, I think we're up to with three cents. Okay. Oh, oh, the last thing you need, you need some wood shavings. So wood shavings like this. Can you see that, Kevin, in the camera there? Wood shavings. Okay. Where do you get those? Well, if you live in the country, if you or one of your neighbors has chickens, they probably have shavings. Yeah. If you don't live in the country, go to a country store and ask for shavings. You can get a great big bundle like this for two bucks, which you don't need. So ask for a little bit of shavings, and she'll say, we don't sell smaller, smell, sell smaller bundles, sir. So you ask her, I just need a little wee bit. Can you give me a little bag full out of a broken bag? And she probably will. She'll probably give it to you. If that doesn't work, go to the pet shop. Yeah, this is what they use for hamsters, and gerbils, rabbits. Right, Kevin, rabbits. So I get a little bag there. So there's what you need. Paper muffin cup, string, wax, and some shavings. Now what do you do? Okay, well the first thing you do is you got to melt this paraffin. Yeah, you got to melt. Now this is the only part of this whole process that you can't let the grandkids do. Because there's a little wee bit of a risk here. First of all, paraffin is very hot. When it melts, it's very very hot. If it pours on your hand, it's going to cause a nasty nasty burn. So do be careful. Secondly, paraffin is also flammable. It's not crazy flammable like gasoline, but it's flammable. So you don't want to melt this over a flame. You use, a, use an electric stove or some electric utensil. Get an old pot, all right, put it on the stove, dump the paraffin in, whatever you think you're going to use. You probably use a quarter of one of these. Put it in, uh, spew these into the pot, get the temperature on, not too hot, get it melted. Now, once it's melted, turn the temperature right down so it stays melted, but it's, it doesn't get boiling and it doesn't get too hot. That's it. So you got your paraffin melted, you got your, uh, what we call this, baking cup paper, baking cup, and you got some string. Okay, first thing to do is cut the string. Okay, so you get about six inches of string. That's too much, but get that much anyway. Okay, step one, six inches of string. Now, you got your paraffin in the pot. You got your one quart, two quart saucepan with a few inches of paraffin in there. Now, it's like making porridge. Got the paraffin melted. Take the, so the shavings. Now, it has to be shaved. I almost said sawdust. It can't be sawdust. It has to be shavings, actual shavings. See? Little little slivers of real wood like that. Get your shavings and dump it into the pot. Now, if you've ever made porridge, you want this to be a runny porridge. You don't want it thick. You want it kind of runny, but you don't want it like water. Okay, so pour shavings in, stir it up, more shavings in, stir it up until it's kind of runny. If you go like this, it'll run around. But, but, you know, it's like a runny porridge. And, and, and put the shavings in there. Stir it all up so it's good. And then take the string, set the string <clears throat> into the pot, into, into this little cup like so, and hold it with your fan, pour a paraffin in. That's it. Pour it up to the top. The string will stick out of the middle at the top. Here's what it looks like. It looks messy is how it looks. You see that, Kevin? So, and, and something else to be, I just noticed is, I've been a bunch of these. I just noticed that the, the, this, this, this baking cup tends to spread a bit. So be ready for that. Don't set this on a counter. Have a piece of cardboard or a baking tray or something underneath it when you do this, okay? And then pour the wax in. As you pour it in, it'll start to stiffen up. It'll start to harden. And eventually you'll end up with, with like, I'm going to peel a bit of this edge off if I can here, Kevin. And you'll be able to see. Oh, I used uh, two cups. There's two cups in here, but that's all right. Pour it out, pull it off. And you can see on there, can you see the wood? I pull a piece of wood off, but each piece of wood is coated with paraffin, and the, and, and the string in the middle is also coated with paraffin. There you go. Let it stiffen, and there is your fire starter. How does it work? Well, let me tell you how it works. It works fantastic, is how it works. All you need, and, and you can see what it is. It's really very simple. You light the string. It draws paraffin up. 
the string burns like a candle, but unlike a candle, what happens is the wood starts to burn. So in a very few minutes after you get this string lit, as, as the flame burns down, let me get this lit here properly, as the string, as the flame burns down the string, gets down to the bottom, then the wood starts to burn. Now the wood is also soaked in paraffin. And the wood starts to burn as well. So pretty soon you have a little circle, a two inch circle of burning paraffin and wood chips. And it doesn't go out. Now you can put it out, you can smother it with a handful of snow, it'll go out. It's perfectly safe. It's not going to blow up on your face, but this will not go out. So you put this down the very bottom on the snow. This is how you become a great grandpa. <laughs> put it on the very bottom on the snow, and you put a little bit of kindling on it. You don't have to get you don't have to get tinder, little fine stuff like a mouse nest or anything, because this will actually start to burn the wood now. This will actually start burning small sticks of wood. So this is sitting down. I'm going to move down here again. This is sitting down on the snow. You put your sticks on there, and then you got the kids out there, your grandkids, they you go get me more sticks, and they can't see this. And you put it in there, and they come back in a few minutes, and Grandpa's got the fire started. And then all you have to do is keep them running around getting wood. There you see, it's starting to spread to the wood. You see that, Kevin? No time at all. It's safe, it's easy to put out, turn it over, it goes out, just like that. You can't reuse them. Once you have a nice fire burning, the whole thing goes. So there you go. Paraffin, string, chips, fire starter. Now you can actually buy these. This is a commercially made one. Commercially made. Can you see that, Kevin? It's also a paper cup, paraffin, wood chips. And they have a red string. <laughs> and you buy about six of these for, I think they're 10 or 12 bucks. So these are a couple bucks a piece. But more fun to make your own. Yeah, cheaper too. Anyway, there you go. Now, I think we'll do that, Kevin. I think it'd be kind of fun. So we're going to get the kids together, and we'll go for a little ride out in the bush, and we'll start a fire. See how these things work. I know they work. We've used them for years. Anyway, there you go. I'll make a, now, this will actually work on a fireplace too. If you don't have the best wood, and you don't have some tinder or some paper, and you want to get a fire going, going well, Throw one of these into your fireplace, light it up, you can't hurt anything, and it'll certainly have your fireplace going in no time at all. Hope there's something in there that you enjoyed and gives you a tip. Some of you grandpas out there, if you're looking for a way to impress your uh, grandkids. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Alec Pierce, idea for you. Maybe it'll be of some interest to you. Alec at the ranch. Talk to you soon.